Greetings, everyone. My name is Peter Megyeshi, and my PhD topic is uh, high-speed network traffic emulation. And uh, let me tell you just a few words about uh, uh, the background of this topic. It is actually a common research uh, project between the Ericsson R&D here in uh, Budapest and the High Speed Network Laboratory, which uh, uh, I am part of at the university, uh, the Technical University of uh, uh, Budapest. And we have been working on a framework which is capable to produce synthetic but realistic uh, uh, network traffic generation. And we achieve it by uh, emulating users in remote, uh, remotely controlled machines like with uh, clicks and keystrokes and touches and, and these kind of things. And we already have a, a few uh, uh, publications uh, on this framework in prestigious conferences like uh, the IEEE Infocom or the ICC. So but let, let me tell you a few words about uh, the scientific challenge of this program. So nowadays, uh, the traffic of the internet has a very complex behavior. It means that uh, uh, it can be modeled by uh, 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 mathematical models. Uh, maybe you can find some very complex models, such as multifractals and, and these kind of things, uh, which can uh, 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 approximate these things. But there is no unified model which can describe uh, the internal traffic. And uh, uh, the other problem is that there are numerous applications being used uh, uh, on the internet. And the uh, service providers are very interested in uh, uh, classifying these, these uh, 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 applications to apply different charging or, or, or this kind of stuff. And this is a very hard problem as well. So as a, as a scientific uh, uh, research, this is an open problem as well. And uh, what is actually my goal is to build a framework which, is, uh, uh, which does these two things at the same time. So, so making a, so, so can produce synthetic traffic which is very close to the real traffic on the internet while making traffic classification very easily so we can, uh, we can test uh, devices using this. Because let, uh, now I want to talk about a few words about how device testing is working these days. So now if, uh, if a company wants to test their new product, uh, usually they have uh, some good partnership with a network operator. So they go them and, and they took measurements on the real network. Uh, but they cannot use it you know, directly. They have to go through uh, an, an anonymization process because of legal and privacy uh, issues. And then they can use this traffic to reply and test their, test their new device and say that, OK, it's working. But the real problem is, is that we have different companies with different products. So if the other company wants to test uh, their own device, they probably have uh, taken measurements in a different place they're going through a different process, so the data that they are testing is very different. And if you have a, a third, then it's going, going on. So actually, the results are uncomparable with each other. It's a very big problem, because uh, uh, if we want to buy a device, we, 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 we cannot choose the, the, the best one. So what's uh, uh, our vision is to create this framework, which can produce uh, test data, which we can use to test uh, uh, different devices under the same condition. So then we can say that, OK, these devices are working. And these are not. So actually making these tests uh, uh, comparable. Uh, and then uh, for the last thing, I want to talk about my personal motivation for this IND uh, uh, education. So why I did uh, apply for this course was because uh, uh, three kind of things. So as I've said, my uh, my PhD topic is already uh, uh, industry related. I have, uh, uh, I have my own uh, uh, industry supervisor back at uh, uh, Ericsson. And uh, actually, it would be very interesting to see the process that how my, um, how my research goes into a product. And Ericsson can use this uh, later on in their devices. Uh, and then at the next one, that I have many friends who want to start their own startups, and they were all, always asking me to join them and help them. But uh, I, always said, I always said that, OK, I would, I would like to do that, but I don't think that I have, I have uh, enough knowledge about these things, and I don't want to do programming because, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, 
so so this is a this is another thing and and then the uh, the third thing is that my father actually uh, uh, is a co-owner in a small enterprise with with only six employees but uh, what they do is actually they are uh, Cisco certified partners so they are building and maintaining uh, 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 networks and uh, what uh, they do have that uh, actually don't have like a real competitive product so what they do is just building and maintaining networks and, and, and that's all so no like a uh, further plans for the future and uh, it is a very uh, highly possible that uh, I will we were working with them uh, in the future. So uh, in, in that case, I think this, uh, this course will be very, very useful to me. And uh, after the doctorate, I uh, actually want to stay at the, at the university teaching as a part-time job because I, am, I actually enjoy uh, teaching. So I took way more uh, uh, educational tests than I have to as a PhD student, so like two or three times more then it's actually obligatory. But uh, uh, other than that, I think for a, as, a, as a main uh, uh, activity, uh, so one of these three possibilities will be uh, my, my thing. So stay at the research, but in the industry side, or start my own startup with my friends, uh, or actually take over my father's company and, and, and build it in the future. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. give you a chance to be over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I have a question. Uh, you, you mentioned that you, you were uh, uh, studying uh, an emulation for, traffic, for high speed traffic. Yes. And um, what you present in the, in the next slide, in fact, is capturing a, an actual traffic yes. in order to, to assess. So my main question is, uh, if you make an emulation, how do you compare it we have, would say what w would have been the real traffic, because it's it's very difficult to measure. From yeah, the yeah, internet. yes, yes. So uh, if you emulate something, how you can make sure that it represents something that could have been happen happening? Uh, yeah, the, on the, the real internet. Yes, the, the the actual idea is is that we can uh, we can take measurements on real networks, and then use them uh, and then use our measurements to 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 create something which looks like very same but then contains no data from the origin <coughs> measurements so so we just use it to uh, to to find out how does an, an, an actual measurement look looks like yeah but, but it's a risk because it's already difficult in fact to measure things yeah. on the internet the topology is still changing uh, the usage is changing and the you only see a part of internet and uh, you have to make sure that this part is uh, representative of, yeah, yeah. of a real of thing, course. Uh, yeah. which is quite difficult, in fact. And the real interesting thing is inside. Uh, you don't lose uh, the interesting thing, because if you want yeah, to but capture maybe but you some, don't know what some is peak, interesting peak, thing. peak something, uh, what, what happens before Christmas, maybe, mm -hmm. then you have to be the, you have to know that there is this thing, and you will mm -hmm. capture yeah. really the, the, the peak or some event or some... Yeah. Event. In many engineering place, you, you want to have, a, I would say, a procedure to assess what is the, the, the error margin you have. And then, on the internet, it's very difficult, in fact, to, to have a, even a, mm. a, a clue about the error yeah. margin. Okay.